Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. My name is Femi Akonde, and you're watching the hottest debate show on TV, The Big Issue. Issue. Well, it's now a new normal to see young men gathering at betting shops all over Nigeria to place bets on the possible outcome of sports games around the world. The ability to predict correctly puts more money in your pocket. Sports betting has grown into a phenomenon that some people are beginning to think it is a catalyst to financial empowerment. It now seems everyone indulges in sports betting, young and old, male and female. There's a Chinese proverb that says, if you must play, decide upon three things at the start, the rule of the game, the stakes, and the quitting time. That, I think, is very important. Sports betting has also won fortune for some and has lost fortunes for others. An anonymous uh, quote also says, how do you deal with a crop of youth that sees trial and error as a veritable tool to make sincere cash? What do you think? Is sport betting a positive social force? Well, that's our debate today. And that debate will start off right after this break. You're still watching The Big Issue. Welcome back. Is sports betting a positive social force? Well, that's the conversation we're going to have here today. And of course, to start the debate, we have Innocent Adelugba. Let's welcome Innocent Adelugba. <laughs> welcome, Innocent. Take this side of the podium. Well, ladies and gents, welcome. Innocent Adelugba is a sports analyst and he is a social commentator. I believe some of you are familiar with his face. Innocent Adelugwa believes sports betting is a positive social force. Welcome again, Innocent. <laughs> well, there are always two sides to a debate. On the other side of the debate, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Rufai Oseini. <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. Rufai Oseni, a man of many sides, is a global speaker, a thought leader, a business owner, and a radio presenter. Welcome again, Rufai Oseni. <laughs> Rufai Oseni feels sports betting has its adverse um, effect and um, not a social force, as Adelugba will want us to believe. All right, I'm really excited to be here. Like you said, my name is Rufai Oseni. I'm a global speaker, and I'm really excited to be amongst you great people here today, because I know you are the future. And I must have to say this because it's become a pandemic in society. A lot of young people out there want to bet, and they feel that's the only way out to make money. But let me throw around some stats. Unemployment rate in this country is still pegged at close to 20%. If spot betting was the answer, wouldn't that number have been reduced? That's a food for thought. Secondly, hard-hand money. An average Nigerian lives on less than $2,000 in a year, in the middle class. But that's very small money has been taken to go bet and play Baba Jebu. In fact, you need to see that it has got into a level of madness. Pantomime madness, you need to see. In betting, you need to understand that somebody will always be the winner. And like they say, who is the winner? The house always wins. No matter how much you bet, it's not going to give you financial enablement because the house will always win. And you know who will be the big players in all of this? The betting companies. Average betting companies that are coming to Nigeria in the space of five years have grown over 340%. Do you know how they have grown? They've grown at the expense of you giving you false hope and telling you that you'll win someday. Look at it. At the end of playing every single day at the terminal, the terminal man will have made over 300,000 naira. Give a sizable amount of that to the betting company. 
It's only one person sometimes that wins over 50,000 naira. Who wins in the whole of this? The betting business is about the biggest in this country because it's a one-sided business. Vilfredo Pareto, the great um, Italian economist, said something. He said there's something called a Pareto's optimal. What is a Pareto's optimal? Somebody wins and the other person loses. In betting, there's only one Pareto's optimal. The betting company wins All right. and you lose. All right. Wow. William Bolito also um, said that a gambler is nothing but a man who makes his living out of hope. Adoluba, how do you respond to that? Well, uh, Rufai is a brilliant speaker, global. <laughs> Rufai, that's a very well delivered one. Thank you. Whenever we talk about sports betting, many things are not clear. Make it clear. Many things are not clear. We have words there called sports betting, you've mentioned gambling. Now, I'll come from sports. Sports are organized physical activities. They require specific skills. They have rules and regulations guiding them. We know tennis, we know football and co. It is not illegal. It is clear. Now, that's to play sports. Yes, that's sports. Of course, even sports betting is not yes. illegal. Now, betting is to stake a prediction on this organized activity. The World Cup is in June. I tell you, Germany will win. You say no, Nigeria will win. Let's bet. Is that gambling? Now, gambling is APC will win election in 2019. Who says so? Or you tell me I will die in the evening. I say no, you say bet. It's unquantified, it's uncertain. Now, another thing you mentioned uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm bothered about is uh, you talked about uh, employment rate, you talked about youth. You will be surprised at the rate of big professionals who bet. And you see, betting is not in the same bracket as gambling. It is a form of gambling, ask for. But in gambling, you can bet anything, you can stake anything. You, people stake their cars, people stake salaries, and go home crying. People mistake that for betting where you have sizes. You could bet 100 naira, and go home with the rest of your money, you could bet 500 naira, and the chances are cleared, especially in football, so that you can have a choice. We could say in, 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 in Holland, in Argentina, Nigeria, in Russia, uh, we want to bet that both sides will score. What do we call that in betting? We call it go-go. And it is something that is original. Give yourself a round of applause, please. And you follow, you follow it up. You agree with me that people don't bet for pleasure anymore. They don't bet for pleasure, they bet for rewards. Of course, if money is leaving your pocket, it should bring something back to you. And like we all will say here, good or bad, there must be winners, there must be losers. I disagree with you that only the betting company wins. We know people who have won something, don't we? And then the man who sets company on ground must also win something to be seen to be sustainable over time, or else nobody will be betting. All right, let me, let me just... So, so I, 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 really, I really appreciate my opponent here, but let me just tell you what he has done. You know what he has done? He has taken a baby, put it in the bathwater, and thrown it away. And let me tell you, cast your mind back to a film shot in 1995 called Lagos Nawa. The man earned his first salary in 95. He took the money. He squandered it. And he hinged the soap on it. The first time he won, the second time he lost. You said it's legal. I will tell you it's legal. But it also puts pressure on the sporting personnel themselves. Recently, the Australian cricket team was disgraced because big betting companies told them to play to favor them. It brings corruption. Match. It brings nepotism, match fixing. it brings strife, it brings match fixing. One of the most celebrated Nigerian footballers that will have ever graced football scene in the world, like you know very well, Justin Fashanu. What was the problem with Justin? There had been cases of match fixing and John. And you know what happened? That thing tarnished their image. Because you know what this will do for you? It will put you out there and it will burn you. 
You know what I remember every time when I see people bet? I remember Nazi Germany, Hitler, telling people, I'll give you the future, I'll give you salvation, but he never gives you anything but sorrow, tears, and blood. And I'll also tell you something. When will you stop staking your, your, your life on chance of one person? Somebody owned the betting company. When are you going to set up your own company? You can't keep waiting for somebody to make a decision based on a couple of odds that you have fixed before you stake your life. So if you tell Nigerian youths, close to 20% of them that are unemployed, that it's a viable option, you are telling the Nigerian youths that they are so dogmatic, nothing can come out of them, and all they need to do is to bet. You talk about this, but the pervasive trend is the young people, the middle class people. I have seen a person that he can't pay his children's tuition fees any longer because he goes a little bit overboard. Rufai. We forget in a hurry that the problem with humanity is control. Once you start, you don't stop. Rufai. Rufai. Once you've tasted blood, you don't Rufai, stop. Rufai, I want you to know this. Do you want to put your future on chance? Rufai, <gasps> Rufai, I want, I want, they say a naira or a dollar won is twice as sweet as a dollar end or a naira end. A naira end. Not a dollar one, not a naira one. You know what a dollar one is? A dollar one is a path road to destruction. Look at everybody in history that have won a national lotto or a lottery. Millions of dollars. In the next five years, they are broke. Mm -hmm. Betting doesn't set your mind on the mark of priority. You know what it does? It destroys you because the, and the money you win is called what we call a betting bait. When you win today, so that you'll come back tomorrow and do it all over again. Wow. And that's what it does for you. And that's why it builds addiction. And that's why you see people are wasting their lives on this. I can tell you this, this is a national challenge because a lot of youths are wasting away. People are taking their tuition fee to go and play and stake. You are betting on a Sea Ronaldo or a Messi that takes on 200,000 pounds sterling every week. Don't you have a future? Don't you think you're worth taking that money home? Isn't your life better than that? People have worked. The Bible says, my father work at heater to I must work. Go and find work to do and hold your future in your hands. by uh, the former U.S. President, Barack Obama. He said, we didn't become the most prosperous country in the world just by rewarding greed and recklessness. We didn't come this far by letting the special interests run wild. We didn't do it just by gambling and chasing paper profits on Wall Street. We built this country by making things, by producing goods we could sell. You know, um, we have, I like to say how we are traveling. We have left Nigeria for the US. No, we just, we just. And for use... Europe, for C. Ronaldo and Messi. But uh, we are still in Lagos. But we bet on them now. Hold on, we? I'm coming, yeah. I'm coming. When people win bets. Why don't we bet on a Yimba? I'm coming. <laughs> no, it's that's a choice. A, that's another issue. OK, so. Maybe, 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 maybe. OK. Maybe if we bet on them. OK, we excuse me. So, so that, that means he is supporting betting. He's no. looking for us to bet. No, 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 no I, I'm just asking a question. Yes, he doesn't like betting, but he would have loved us to bet for him. I will so not. He's, he's I will, my way gradually. I will not. Anyway, let me know. Let me I will you. not bet on Iyimba. But I'm saying, even if you are going to do a daft thing, why don't you do a daft thing to support an okay, economy so, like this? OK. Now, I'm going to answer you. In the US, they are projecting betting to give them a gain of 6.3 billion in five years' time. All of these monies are called plowback in economy. Capitalism. You see, yes, when you win, your wealth standard increases. Your affordability and purchasing power is boldened. And what you do with it is not our business. But he just said it is a bait. You I'm go coming. back and bet again with it. And, and then, then I'm, I'm going, let me answer him. Okay. Do we call it betting what they do in the stock market? You buy shares in anticipation of selling it. So, no, that, so that is true. Can I, can I come yeah, No, I, I'm not done yet. Can I I'm not done. done. No, I'm not done yet. I, you will come. You will come. No, hold on. Hold on. That's what we do. How many of our parents bought stock for us to grow and enjoy? 
They were staking money in anticipation of growth, what you call bull or beer or whatever, so that when it blossoms and ripens and booms, that we, excuse me, we growing up, we'll reap it. So if somebody won a lotto, winning is the aim of betting. If you squander, that's your personal problem. Sure. I, so, I don't know if I'm wrong. So, so can I I'm I'm talking about talking can about I, the stock, I, talking about the stock market I, now. Those shares are for companies to run their businesses, and can, at the end of the day, the can profit is shared. are for betting companies to run themselves. Can, can, Look can, at can gambling, a, MMM, it has crashed. Exactly. Betting companies are still running. Can I can I have a rebuttal? All right, let's yes. let's let's. We, they're let's, still running. Let's, well, once again, once again, my lovely audience, you know what he has done again. He has taken I'm his cake. Something. No, hang on a minute. <laughs> hang on a minute. He has taken his cake. He has eaten it. And now he he's putting it, it in the fridge. <laughs> let, let me tell you things. We are here to educate the people. Yes. Betting our stock market are totally different yes. things. So please do not, do not mislead the people. I'm a financial analyst. I work in the financial market. I run businesses. And I think it's an insult on those hardworking companies quoted on the Nigerian Stock Exchange for you to compare them with betting. In fact, on national TV, I think you should apologize to all the Do companies. Do you know that a betting company? On the national Stock Exchange. No. Hang a betting minute, company can now, grow big let, let me, and get quoted. In so let me now go further. Do you know let, let me Let me now go further. Let me now go you further. You are taking money. Let me now go further to tell you this. Growth. So let me go Simple. further to tell you this. Let me have my Simple. rebuttal. Simple. It's not, it's not Real an quickly. insult. All right, all Real right, quickly. My debate says you are preempting the next segment, which is the Fire for Fire segment, and that will be after this quick break. You're still watching The Big Issue. Welcome back. Is sports betting a social force? And I must tell you, Innocent and Rufai are indeed doing a good job in arguing this topic we're having today. And it's now time for the Fire for Fire segment. Well, gentlemen, in this segment, of course, as it, as it sounds, Fire for Fire, ah, uh, salvos will be fired. Mm. Uh, but in this segment, we beg our uh, debaters to mind their language because uh, this is television and uh, you're free to ask him a question. You can also ask him a question. You don't like his line of argument. You can interject at any time, but let's um, not allow it to generate into noise. So the ball is in your court. Fire. Yeah, but I would like to let him know from here <laughs> that we are talking about sports betting, betting. even okay. though we are overflowing our banks. Okay. And I have said here that sports and betting are something that are organized. Now, mm. betting is staking your money on predictable outcomes. And I've given example in- Predictable outcomes. Yes, predictable outcomes. Predictable. Outcomes. Predictable. 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 That means you're cheating. Hold on. You're cheating. Excuse that me. That means you know the, you no, know the score. I will explain for you. I, and I'm using for like a word. No, I'm, I'm also I'm shocked. Yes, yes, listen. Predictable outcomes. The outcome. is coming now. Oh, yeah? We have seen the fixtures. Mm -hmm. The predictable outcome is Every group has four four teams, and two will go, two will be. be that, those are the predictions. Do we understand? So you are going to predict on who wins and who loses. So is it a predictable outcome? Yes, they are predictable. Two so, must so, qualify. So let, let me tell you something. You're, it's predictable. You're, you're a sport analyst, but I'll take you back to the 66 World Cup. OK. All right, something happened there. In the city of Middlesbrough, yes. North Korea had never come to the World Cup. Italy had won the World Cup in 38. Yes. Guess what happened? North Korea that never come to the World Cup beat Italy 2-1 in the it's World Cup. It's called an upset. No. And so the person minute, whose prediction did not come true will lose. No. The person whose prediction come true no. will win. Is that predictable? No. Let's call a spade a spade. No. You see, that's why I said you should apologize to all the Nigerians. No, companies. you are getting it wrong. No, 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 you are getting it wrong. Why. When you predict, you, you are, I, I, I am betting. Hang on a minute. Hold on, no, no, no. I am betting. I believe that this is my predictable outcome. That is where I put my money. If it doesn't turn out that way, there is a reward. I will lose. Okay, so can if I come in here? If it turns out expectedly, I will win something. Can, can I come in here? That's, I, that's where it's predictable. Can I come in here? 
please let us have logic where we argue. I must have to say, because there are a lot of very big, 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 big shrouded secrecies going on here. This is not a predictable outcome. Why I said you should apologize to the and let me have my time. You've had yours. No, why I'm firing I, you. You've had your time. You can't have your time. You've had your time. Uh, why I said, why I said this is not a predictable outcome okay. is because, you see those so companies you compared see. betting companies with the stock exchange, they have HR, they have staffing, they work hard day and night, they bid for contracts. It is not betting. Those people work for it. It's the work I'm telling you, you to do. You are looking only at no, Nigeria's small saying, betting no, hang companies. On, hang on, you, with you, you've, had, US, you've had your time. It, look, no, look no, at let, the let, English let, Premiership. Let, let me tell you something. Do you know how big betting companies are? Let, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Because, because, no, let me tell you something. Because even all the big betting companies you're talking about, I know all of them. I've seen all of them. I've been to the office. I've been to Paddy Power. I've been to all the betting companies. You're B-Win of this world and everything. Okay. The truth of the matter is... And they is, don't have HR. The they British, don't have staff. Listen to me. Listen to me. But they are not betting on falsehoods. All right? Those companies are not betting on falsehoods. You are living your life on falsehoods. You see, let me tell you something very profound. No, that's Those wrong. companies... Hang that's on a minute. Wrong. Those companies... Those companies you are seeing... Even now, the British government is saying that there's a certain amount you can stick on bets because they know it's ruining the future of young people. They don't want to do anything. They don't want to go to school. They are putting their future on something else. And you see, you know what betting is? Betting is a modernized form of robbery. It still goes back to that same capitalist mindset. You know what a capitalist does? He comes in, takes everything from you. He doesn't care. He says the survival of the fittest and he takes it all. None of you out here that ever bet will be as rich as the owners of those betting companies. Why I'm here to have this argument is because I want the Nigerian youth to be liberated. Your mind needs to shift. Let me tell you something. You don't need to bet. You have talent. You can code. Write a computer app. A certain man called Mark Zuckerberg wrote a computer app in 2005. He turned it into Facebook. Facebook is so big today. It's worth over 90 billion US dollars. No bets will give you 90 billion US dollars. No bets will give you that amount. No bet will give you that amount. What are the young people out there saying? You talked about all employment. And young people are saying, come, it's not our fault. The I'm jobs saying, are not there. And I'm we're looking for a way out. I'm saying and young the sports people, bet, the sports I'm, bet is putting I'm money saying, in their pockets. I'm saying young people should start up ideas. They are venture capitalists out there. They are people that will improve their ideas. You need to change your world forever. No. Stop okay. living like this. Okay, 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 now let me tell you. He's telling well, all that. I'm coming now. You have a job. Hold on. You, you say, wait, you, you say you, nobody you can company. be richer than the betting company. Yes. Nobody can be richer than the betting company. The company. I'm going back to stock. Yes. So if I buy stock, right, let's balance the, the stage. owners of the stock, will, will I be richer than Venice Bank? Oh, no. oh, sorry, I'm not to call names let, here. Let, will let, I be richer than the bank? Let, let me tell you something. No, no, no. You've you, had all your you time. Can, look, it's your time to listen to me. He's lying again. He's lying again. No, I'm not hanging up. Warren Buffett is richer than most of companies. No, Warren Buffett, if you live in Nigeria. Warren Buffett is in, in Nigeria for buying stock. In Nigeria. Let me tell you In something. Nigeria. There are people that are empires for buying stock uh, in this company. Are we talking about Nigeria? Yes. So, is yes. Warren Buffett in Nigeria? Yes. He's, he lives in, he's a Nigerian. No, we're talking about Nigeria. And you have just lied. You we're talking yes. about Nigeria. And you say I'm lying. No, no, no. Hang on no. a minute. Hang yes. on a minute. Yeah, I'm just lying. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I asked you, know, you thrice. You know, you know the lies you no, told? No, no, no. You just no, lied. You just lied. The lie you told is you this. You just lied. You said nobody buys stocks and is richer than the companies they buy stock from. In Nigeria, I, Warren I, asked, I asked the anchor. They in Nigeria, Warren you just lied. Buffett. Now, listen, okay, everybody. And unemployed youth in Nigeria. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 Please take your time. Okay. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. No, you have to hold on. Leo Stan AK just bought Conga shares. Isn't it Richard at the company? All right, all right, all right. Okay. right. That, that's correct. All right, then. Rufai, uh, Innocent, yes. I would like to make your point quickly. Yes, this is my point. Quickly. This is my let's, point. Let's we have mentioned the UK where they have the EPL. Good economy, people see bets. Yes. We have mentioned the US, a good place. Analysts are projecting in five years' time to rake in $6.3 billion. I'm coming now. In Nigeria, I'm yeah, sorry to, sorry, sorry. Let me even people apologize to the best. government. Unemployment is a culture. And graduates are mining the streets hopelessly. <laughs> and you want them to wait and think of which idea. Where will they open those companies? 
Minister. That will match Mark Zuckerberg. Hang on a minute. Their parents are hungry, hang, no pension, hang, hang no electricity, hang on a minute. poor infrastructure. Hang, hang on a minute. Police. No. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Listen, listen, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. I just got you a 2019 presidential candidate. This is him here. Yeah. What's his manifesto? Bet your life away. Okay, sir. You heard his manifesto. Bet your life away. Go bet. That's not that you That's say ah. I'm not good. Can you see? So, so look at him. So, if if. If what a man that has a job is telling the Nigerian youth to do to fight unemployment is to bet their lives away, you can see why the country isn't growing. How is it's how is sports betting? Youth. How is sports it's betting? Of the youth. How is sports betting betting their lives away? Don't forget, again they say it puts money in their pockets, let me and that you, is very important. Let me, let me purchasing the youth. power, purchasing let, power. Let me ask you one question. He puts money in their pocket, it's a lie, scratch that. How many times do you win from betting? You can't win all How the time. How many times do you win from betting? How oh. many times do you win? But let me tell you something. But how if many times hard, do we win in life? How many times in do you life? win? How many times let me tell you something. Every employer wins every month when he gets his salary because he worked for it and it's an assured outcome. Is it from insurance? Yes. Okay, now. That's it. Okay, thank you. Now, let's listen everybody. He is very sweet. Rufail Everything he has said is right. <laughs> the life does not exist inside textbook. Life exists on the streets. Yes. Who are uh, the pensioners in Nigeria? Old people. Your parents and mine. Are they getting their pension? No. How do they cater for the young people coming up? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Take your own side. I'm not done yet. I talked about national development. He's talking about national development. I talk about the plight of the young people. He's talking about the plight of the young people. He's forgotten the youth. You can see he has no ideas, just like this betting company. It's only one way he's got. You can look at him. <laughs> Nothing to say. That's the lie. Now, I'm going to answer you. He wants, he wants to answer you. Yeah, Let answer him answer you. you. The youth who bet are, are, are smart people. Yes. yes. Give yourself a round of applause. They are smart people. Do you know, even, if, even though we are in the age of internet and, and the jet age, you need a lot of capital to set up some kind of business. Yes. For you to bet, it's you and your phone that is enabled right where you are. In fact, betting is older than you and I, than our parents, who enter the street to go to casinos. Today, you don't need to go anywhere. In the comfort of where you are, you take a slice of your money. I don't know where you get the idea that you bet their life away. You take I, a slice and say, no, no, no. Go ahead. Like go I said ahead. before, you can do 100 naira, you can do 500 naira, <laughs> and you, you could say 1.5, <laughs> you could say both sides score. What do we call that again? Go. Go. Okay, okay. So let me just be quick to say, listen, 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 hang on a minute. Every Nigerian youth, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Every Nigerian youth, please, I wouldn't take it where you're. Let's listen up, guys. Hang on a minute. Every Nigerian youth, I wouldn't take it where you're being insulted on national TV. If he says you are smart, a young boy that is smart just like you build that phone you're betting on in China. A young boy that is smart like you build those phones you're betting on. Listen, 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 listen. No, hang, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. I'm still making my point. I'm still making my point. No, hang on a minute, I'm still making my point. A smart young man like you in Nigeria called Boyola, Olaniro, build game soul. The company is worth over $5 million now. He's the biggest Microsoft developer out of Africa. So where is he, where is he smart, now, where is he? He's in Nigeria, he's employing right about now. people, yes. Right now. Go and do your research, it's up okay. you don't do your research. Okay. All right, if you are smart, and you use your smartness for betting, then the country has failed. Okay. I'm going wow. to give him a final word. Don't let him to insult no. you. Gentlemen, I'm going to gentlemen, gentlemen, allow me to place my bet now. I'm also going to place my bet now, and that is, we'll take a quick break at this point, and after the break, we'll be time for our wonderful audience here to ask their questions. You're still watching The Big Issue.
Welcome back. You're still watching The Big Issue. Well, Sunday has a question. Good afternoon, everybody. I support you, sir. Very much, sir. I'm Yahoo Bet. I love Bet very much. Jesus. I can assure you, sir, I can pick five odds for you and put one million. You are going to chop today. Because our economy is not good. We have bad economy in this Nigeria. Speak up. We are talking about Mazula Bet. It's not in Nigeria. UK, England, everywhere. They are betting. They are betting. So what's your question, really? I'm just asking you, sir, yes. that if you have one millionaire, I can pick five odds for you. I don't, I don't. Uh, yes. So, so, so can, I answer, can I answer that? All right, then. all right, all right. Let's, let, let's, 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 let's allow Rufai respond to that. Can I answer that? Guys, hold on. Please respond to that. Can I answer that? Hold so, on, guys, hold on. Hey. Can I answer that? So, so if I have a million naira, I have over 47 investment portfolios that I will invest in, and your betting odds is not one of them. And let me tell, and let me tell you something. If I give you that money, I've wasted a generation. I've wasted a future. Listen, listen, listen. You see, the problem is a lot of Nigerian youths need to go out and research. Finyi, Finyi got a $26 million investment from Andela. Finyi calls me bros. A $26 million investment from abroad. And he started the company in Nigeria and he's training people. You see, if you believe Nigeria is not working, it will not work for you. You see, when we are talking about this, we need to be honest. I have had offers. I speak around the world. I speak in Cambridge, Oxford. I have had offers to stay abroad. But I will live and die in this country because this is my country. It's going to work for me. The land is green for me. If you think it's not green for you, if you think it's bet, you want to bet, Baru law. Next question. All right, all right, then. Next question. Um, sir, it's not that I don't like what you're saying, sir. But Which what do you say? Um, <laughs> Mr. Innocent Adulodju. Yes, but what do you say about a guy that is yet to be employed? That is not yet employed, but he, w he wakes up one day and realizes that he has only 100 naira. And the next thing he thinks he should do is stake the 100 naira on a game. What do I think? Yes. I think there are In two Nigeria. things involved. If he gambles, he can lose it. If he bets, there is a likelihood of both losing and winning. And being his last Kobo, if he wins, tell us how happy he would be. Next question. Why did he, he will go home sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's why I said it's measured about... Can, can we get the next question? Right. Okay. My question goes to Mr. Adulaja. Are you saying because sports person is putting money in the pockets of this youth. They should not think. They should not do any other thing, but when they finish squandering the ones they have in their pockets, they should go back and bet again. Okay, aside that, as an entrepreneur, I would like to say, youth should not bank their budget on sports betting alone. They should think on diverse things. With 100 naira, if you save it in a month, you can get 3,000 naira. And if you save it on your own, definitely there are so many little, little businesses you can start. And when you start, you get your brand, you get your names, and from there you move on. You don't bank on sports betting because if you bank on sports betting, one day it's it will fail you. And when me. it fails you, what uh, else would you do? Thank she's you. talking to me. Let me ask her. Let, let me tell you something. No, she, uh, who are you talking to? Hold on. Hold on. Who's your question director now? Okay, ask him. Okay. But all those that are bet have Ojudu done. They never right, see. Then. Um, that's a very, that's a very intelligent uh, contribution. On this platform, we have not said you should channel every of their energy into sports betting. Is that what we are saying? No. We say, I said betting is different from gambling because you take a slice of what you have. Have no, said but, so but before. Hang on a minute. What is betting? What is gambling? Define. I've explained it before. I will repeat it. Please, let's listen and be educated. What is betting? When what is gambling? Gambling hmm, is taking wage or money on things that are unquantifiable and unpredictable. Betting is putting your money on predictable outcomes. When it comes out positive for you, you I'm, win. I totally agree with you, 
But then I do not like people treating the symptoms of issues. Yeah. I would prefer them treating causes. Yeah. We, looking at you right now, I want to call you one of the few privileged youths of your time. You don't know me. No, hold on. Hold you don't on, know please. my background. When I see a privileged person, I know that. You don't, you don't know no, hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. You, don't you know are him. privileged. You don't want to no, know I know what I, I When I say that you are privileged, sir, you haven't had it as low as some people in this room. So I want you to be very realistic. That's a lie again. No, hold on, sir. <laughs> Everybody because people, you don't know me. Hold on, Everybody sir. Can I finish lies. what I want because to say? Because you don't know me. Can I finish what I want okay, to say? Let her, let her now, this is my point. If Nigeria as a nation knew what they, were, what they were doing, okay, there are countries who cannot allow some certain businesses because they want to improve the lives of their own people. This country doesn't want Nigerian youths to grow. So you allow betting companies to come. You allow them to build in your nation. And you know that they want to collect money from these youths. In the first place, how did they get here? And then secondly, if you are going to preach to me that people shouldn't bet, which I do not agree that they should, because I will not make money and give it to somebody else. But sir, don't you think that if young people in this nation had the opportunity to live out their dreams, if the Bank of Industry, for example, was not giving loan to foreign and they were giving it to Nigerian youth. Who will you be talking about better? Okay, very, very quickly, very let, let, quickly. Me, let me answer this because of time. Uh, number one, but number one, you don't, you don't know me. Secondly, there is no way in the world betting is banned according to the law. But let me tell you something. It has to be said, even if those opportunities are not being given to youths, you need to start upsetting the apple cart. Because how? Let me tell you something. We build businesses out of nothing. A couple of businesses I've built are out of nothing. And nobody will give you anything out there. Stop comparing yourself with the West where interest rate is less than 1%. We have another question. Wake up is 24%. Yeah, but you need to start something. You can't keep saying because it's not working, you're not going to do. Are people not succeeding? Hold on, let, let's hear Steven, please. My name is Steven. Yeah, even though I don't really support betting, but I just look at situations around us. Now, number one, I believe in every economy or in every investment, there's a risk, whether high or low. Wherever you put your money to invest your money, whether in stock, whether in other businesses, you must have risk for you to either you gain or you lose. Now, maybe why we are coming against betting is because it has a kind of higher risk than expectation, and we think majority lose, but at the same time, we have few numbers that still make them income out of it. Now, when we are talking about re, uh, betting, we have American lottery, Canada lottery, yes, and other do. forms of lottery. And like even when we're young, when we're small, there's this uh, balloon stuff of lottery that we play. It's still kind of a kind of lottery. From there, people will be like, okay, I, I have the opportunity to win. Now, the source of the sort of American lottery, Canada lottery, and the rest, is it also bad? Is it not good? No, so, so let me come in here. There's a difference between an American visa lottery, if you play, and an American lottery. That one, government regulated, government pretty much owns it. You have a Lagos Lotto. Takes all the money, uses it for social good. So it goes back to the big pot. That's voluntary. It's different from spot betting, where you're staking your bet on a particular club winning over the other, and you taking up your proceeds from there. So there are some that are used for social good. And that's why I said before, if you heard me, that there is nowhere in the world where he's, uh, betting is banned, as it were. But you see, what is happening now is a hegemony. Those big players are coming in. They are getting all the funds. They are getting all the joy. They are still giving the trickle down. Part of this to the people that are winning. And it's a cycle that is continuing. You know, it's a rat race. That's the way I see it. A round of applause for yourselves, wonderful oh. audience. Well, we'll take a quick break at this point, and when we return, it will be time to wrap up this very interesting debate. You're still watching The Big Issue. of this very interesting debate. Rufai Hussein, your final thoughts on this? Uh, to, to a very large extent, I must have to thank 
innocent. You know, we've become very good friends from this and uh, forget all the animosity. It's because we're really passionate. And uh, Innocent is just a great man and we'll be doing a lot together. My final thoughts on this is, uh, you've heard the conversations. So it's not about the razzmatazz of the debate, but really it's what you can make out of your life. You can't keep leaving your life to chance. And that's why I'm arguing vigorously against this, because you need to take your life in your hands. There are people that have gone through worse circumstances than we have gone through here. When you hear other people's story, you know it's worse than yours. But what do you do then with your life? That's what matters a great deal. All right. And as you go home to sleep tonight, think about what you want to make out of your life. You have a choice. All right, round of applause for Rufai. All right, Innocent, your last take on this. Well, I'm going to say that um, many people who go to watch football and other sports, rather than watching and paying peanuts at viewing centers, have decided to add something on it that can bring in something for them. It has enhanced their knowledge of sports and games. As we speak, some people sitting here are mobile employees of these betting companies, which put foods on their table. And many people are creating alternative to government abandonment and ineptitude. And they will not sit down. Yes, they will, they will not sit down and wait. Thinking, thinking, th thinking is good. And I am not preaching that you stake your future away to betting. Please go there and bet handsomely. Win well. All right. Then use what you win and go into your own right, investment. Right, that's why no well, gentlemen, I would like both of you to shake hands. Oh. All right, then. Okay. Well, that's how it has been on the program today. We've had a very robust debate. Rufai Oseli and Innocent Adjuloju. Thank you very much for watching and, of course, for being part of this wonderful debate. You can follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Femi Akonde TVC. You can also follow at TVC News NG. And don't forget, this is the big...